I'm just saying thank you, Brother Bill. Thank you, young man. You're 18 years old. I thank you for your commitment to the Lord. I praise you for that. I, I, I'm serious. I'm, I'm being real on that. So I thank you for that. But uh, I sat back a little bit, Mike. I'm Gilbert Patterson's son. <laughs> I know some folks. I just, I just wanted to kind of come in and not trade. But now I got trade. <laughs> So uh, that's what we're going to do. Our text for today comes from, and thank you, brother, all the way from Nebraska. I saw you did the Omega thing. I'm a lamp, man. I'm a lamp. I'm a lamp. I'm a lamp. You didn't even know about that, bitch. You didn't you know, man. You didn't know about that, man. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Psalm 112, verses 1 through 10. Our subject for today, I'm going to give you my, uh, well, no, I'm not going to give you my subject. It's just Psalm 112, verses 1 through 10 reads as follows, if you have it, Psalm 112, verses 1 through 10, it says, Praise ye the Lord, blessed is a man that feareth the Lord, that delighted, great, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will not be moved forever. The righteous show will be an everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. I wanted to just shoot through that and go to Psalm 112 again from the Amplified. It's a version of the scripture that amplifies the meaning of the text. It says, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who fears the Lord with awesome inspired reverence and worship him with obedience, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. On this Father's Day, I wanted to share with you from the thought, the blessings of a good father. Wow, see right there in our cultural dynamic, just the thought itself starts some people to boil. Then I thought about how that would make someone feel that might not have had the influence of a good father. In the black community, days like today often yield messages about absentee fathers, the missing black man, fathers who don't see their children, or about the babies who, or about the brothers who can make babies but not take care of them. It's my desire to navigate around many of the traditional negative narratives about fathers, especially the black father, black men or men themselves. So I will share today from the title, The Blessing of a Good Man. Right. The Blessing of a Good Man. Yeah. I don't know if y'all got one, but if you got a good man, it's a blessing. I know that a lot of the uh, stereotypes and a lot of the things that are spoken over men, but it is a blessing to have a good man, a good man. Saints, I promise that if you ever get a good man in your life, it's a blessing. I know that over time, some of you ladies have met some pretenders, you met some players, you met some playboys, and you met those who could prevaricate in a New York minute. Those, will, those individuals will, for the most part, elude our discussion today. Today is my intention to tell you just the blessing of a good man. People's lives have changed for the better once they found a good man. My life was blessed for the better when I found myself in the presence of good men. The Bible says iron sharp and iron. Folks, you, you, you are who you hang with. I hung with some guys in the hood. I've been around the corners. I've been around some places that y'all don't think the pastor never would have been around. But that didn't make my life better. Now I'm going around people that, that, that who are so great that they make me nervous just to be around them. Folks, I'm telling you, it's a blessing when you are around a good man. 
um, uh, you know, it would seem that manhood itself right now is under attack. We're declining in the ranks of corporate America. Black women, listen black women, black women are earning more money than they ever have before. Black women are being promoted in the ranks of corporate America like never before. That's simply a great thing. But many of the advances are being countered by the disappearance of many black men from upper management in the corporate world. Black men have many stigmas that they have to be at war with in the corporate workplace. I can have on a suit and tie and get on the elevator and see somebody clutch their purse. And when I might have more in my wallet than she got in her purse. But that's just what we have to deal with. In the past, even myself, I hear you hear this in the corporate world. They talk about your tone, and they say that your size intimidates people. Tone is one of the boys' words that they can label you in the, in the workplace. So my response is that I'm six feet tall and over 200 pounds. So why wouldn't I have a tone, and why wouldn't I have some presence? I'm not supposed to sound like a soprano. I'm a man, and I should sound like one. Saints of God, I for one am not one of the brothers that's trying to get in touch with my female self. Preach, Steve, I just did. With the rise of the Me Too and other strong feminist movement, I think that the thought of the blessing of a good man has started to disappear from our minds. Um, let me be clear, sisters. I'm for the sisters. I'm married to one. I have two sisters. I have a stepsister. I have daughters. I have a granddaughter. Uh, I have female cousins, aunts, and a loving mother that's barely clinging on, but she's still here. So I have no problem with seeing the sisters prosper. Sisters, I'm not intimidated by your success. Any man that's intimidated by your success, sisters, is probably not the right one for you. Well done, my sisters, but today isn't about you. I still stand, I still stand by the thought of the blessing of a good man. A good man will change your house. A good man will change your life. A good man will bless the lives of your children. I hear story after story about men who became great stepfathers, or maybe they were uncles, they were fill-in fathers, or surrogate fathers, or they just picked up a little boy down the street that didn't have a father figure. Saints, the blessing of a good man isn't something we can shake so easily, nor do we need to underestimate. According to a text, this text, a man that fears God and trusts in him are a blessing beyond expression. A blessing beyond expression. Doesn't that sound great? Maybe that's why Proverbs 13 verse 22 states, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. One of the blessings of a good man is that a good man should change your economy. Oh, right. did, I, did I say that? A good man should help you in the pocketbook. My sisters and my brothers, I know that we're living in a changing world where women are now getting down on one knee and asking the brother for his hand in marriage. Things are changing, but one thing that you should never change is that a good man should change your finances. One OG told me a long time ago, that was when I was in the street, and he said, Steve, it's two men who don't give a woman money. Or give a woman money. He said, one is a broke man, and the other one is a dead man. So I support the thought that a good man will bless any house that he's in financially. Psalm 112 verse 3 in the New Living tra Translation states that his children should be honored everywhere. So many children have taken positive traits from a good man. Many have benefited from the affirmation of a good father. Saints are from the old school where a good man, where I cover, I protect, I provide, and I defend. I promise you that if something goes bump in the night at our house, that I'm not sending First Lady Smith to the door to check it out. A good man will bring honor to your children. I came from a well-dressed, well-groomed, and smooth father. The young ladies at Central High School, when I went there, they all said, oh, well, your dad is a good-looking daddy. Then other people would ask me in the streets, aren't you Hamilton Smith's son? That opened doors for me time and time again. My being his son obtained me significance in the marketplace before I could ever obtain it on my own. 
don't underestimate the power of a good man. I would even suggest the thought that there's simple, there's not a single godly woman present today that would have a problem following a man that's busy following God. Am I right? Amen. The blessing of a good man will bring wealth and riches to your home. I again salute you sisters for carrying the torch for our people when some of the brothers don't have it all together. St. Sister Deborah right there, she married a project and it was a rather difficult one at that. But I do believe that her investment in this project is starting to yield her some return. Let's not give up on our men. The black man is vilified by the media, castigated in the workplace, and stigmatized in school. Let's not give up on the brothers. I will boldly state that I'm a good black man. And I truly feel that I'm a blessing to any room that I enter. I walk with my pants up. I speak with the voice of a man. I, I don't scratch where I don't itch and I don't laugh when I don't tickle. When I say something, they said, did you say that? I said, I sure did. The greatness of a man isn't how he can charm all of the women, but the greatness of a man is on best display when he can bring the queen out that lives on the inside of that one special woman that he loves. Preach, Steve. I'm going to get in there tonight. The blessing of a good man. When that good man follows God, then look for your life to rapidly change. Prosperity will manifest in that man's life. This man will be chosen by God to change the atmosphere of any place that he enters. Saints, I spent years being that which I learned in the streets, but my life changed tremendously once I decided to do it God's way. God's way changed my mind so I could think right. God's way changed my mouth so I could talk right. God's way changed my life so I could live right. Saints, never underestimate the importance of the blessing of a good man. You, you think I'm just talking, but I'm going to give you Bible. Psalm 37, verses 23 through 25. It said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And David said, I've been young, and now i got some gray up here. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Y'all know I'm going to come out of this uh, lecturing in just a minute. I just got to lay the case. The blessing of a good man is the order of this day. The coronavirus is roaming our streets. Racial division are nearly pushing us towards civil war. And our babies are killing babies. But I stand with the boldness to tell you that there's a blessing of a good man. St. Matthew 12, verse 35, they said, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Psalm 37, verse 37 said, mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. There's a blessing in a good man. Psalm 1, Verses 1 through 3 said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the sit, sit, sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth his fruit in his season, his leaf, shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. There's a blessing of a good man. Jeremiah 17, verses 17 and 7 and 8 said, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The blessing of a good man. James 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endure temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The blessing of a good man. Proverbs 27 verse 17 said that iron sharpeth iron. 
It didn't say rubber sharp and rubber. You need to be around some men that can bring out the man in you, bring out the king in you. Sometimes you, it's hard to see yourself while you're in the frame. Uh, that's why I tell everybody about coaching because there's somebody that can see the giant in you. They can look at you, Mike, and they can see, uh, bring the giant out of you. They can look at you, Deborah, and bring out the queen in you. Look at you, Tammy, bring out the queen in you. There's somebody always outside of your seat that's not in your situation that can see the best inside of you. Iron sharp as iron. You're going to be the limit of your three, four best friends. If your four best friends in your fair five or your favorite five or your cell phone, if they broke, guess what you're going to be? You got to start changing some relationships. Changing relationships will change your life. Iron sharp as iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. The blessing of a good man. First Timothy 5 and 8. But if any man provide not for his own, come on brothers, I got to tell you, not for your own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. How would I look making sure y'all all good and Sister Deb around there uh, got to sell stuff on the side and go out and find everything else? It's my responsibility. I think about it every time I want to get... Back in the day, I used to get mad and hot at a job, and I will walk out in a heartbeat back in the day. But when now you get a little older, you get a little more responsibility. You got folks depending on you. You got a wife that don't work. Preach, Steve, I just did. You gonna get out there and you gonna learn how to take what you thought you couldn't take. I hear all the little young guys that say that I can't take it and I'll go on. And that I hear all the time that's so bad in our dynamic because if my dad had one little rule, he wanted me to be home by a certain time at night and I thought that was so confined and it was one o'clock and I moved out at 19. I didn't want to give him any money but I gave Mikowski and Regal, I gave Fogelman some money every month and when I didn't get it they wanted to throw me out. But I, you got, I, talk, I tell young men all the time it's hard for two grown men to be in the house but if you don't pay the bills at the house you don't run the house. The person that pays the bills runs the house. If he paying for your food, he paying for the roof over your head, he paying rent, he paying for everything else, that's who runs the house. And, and it's just so, we, we got to start seeing that because I think we get so, we get so bold on the man's side that he questioned me and everything else. But we got to go back to fathers of old. I always hung around older people. I got, got friends that are way past my age that are in my phone book, but I learned lessons from them. Why would you allow somebody with that much wisdom right there, or that much wisdom right there that's already been where you've yet to go, and you not learn how to navigate from them? They paid the price, and if you can get for free what they ain't already been through, that doesn't make any sense. There's a blessing of a good man. We need good men. We need good men. We ain't putting down men today. I know that they, they say the church, and there ain't no good men in the church, but there's some good men in the church. Yes, I wrestled and almost went over to the other side. I got in college and, and pledged and, and then read the autobiography of Malcolm Hex, and I said, is, the, is this the white man's, <laughs> is the white man's God? And, and is this and, and, and everything else, but I'm speaking that word to you that there are strong men in the church. When I got in trouble, I called on Allah and Allah didn't answer my call. Preach, Steve, I did. I'm telling you, when I got in trouble, I went when and Allah didn't do anything. When I was in the jam, I called on the name of Jesus, the one that they made me go listen to, the one that they forced me to go to church time and again. And when I was in a bad place, the only person that healed me was Jesus Christ. Yes, men are standing for Christ. Yes, men, all of us ain't out here doing nothing wrong. All of us preachers ain't got a little chick on the side. I'm speaking that word to you prophetically that there's a blessing of a good man. If y'all believe that there's a blessing of a good man, hold your hands up. It's Proverbs 22, verse 29. See if our man diligent in his business 
If you work hard enough, he shall stand before kings. How many of you want to stand before kings, Bell? Do you want to stand before kings? I told you, you can't change some things. Some people are going to always have some problem with you. But there's a blessing of a good man. I work. I, you know, I heard Conrad Hilton, the owner of the Hilton franchise, he said years ago that he got rich by working half days. And somebody looked at him, how would you get rich working half days? He said, you pick which one you want to do, even the first 12 or the last 12. That's the commitment. They said, well, Steve, I don't see why you're working all the time. That's what they said all the time. You must be crazy working for the folks like you working for the folks. They don't say it no more. Folks, if you want to be blessed, you got to put some time in. I got a family. Every time I think about a crisis situation where I used to run off from a job, I think of my wife, Deborah. I got her to support. I got a child with an autoimmune that, that, that's depending on me every day. I'm telling you that I'm tied up, I'm locked up, I'm responsibility up, and there's a blessing of a good man. I wake up every day. I ain't stealing from nobody. I'm working with the sweat of my brow, and I'm going to outwork you. I sat in a corporate meeting. I said, you may be smarter than me. You may be well connect, more well connected than me, but you will not outwork me. They said, you can't say that. I said, when you get through, you will not outwork me. Saints of God, I'm speaking a word to you that I came from the hoods and the streets of South Memphis. I know Kenny Man. I ran with Junebug. I know about all of the folks and all of the tricks selling stuff and, and all the things that you think in a million years that I wasn't born in and I joined it. I grew up in a Baptist church and I was in the streets of South Memphis. But when I came into holiness, when they said that holiness and this is still right. I didn't change. I didn't defer. There's a blessing of a good man. I'm standing for Christ. I stand when you don't look. I stand when you look. Come on, I feel this day. I'm telling you that I, there's a blessing of a good man. I'm telling you we can change our city. One by one. We get one brother here. We get one brother there. We can turn our city around. There's a blessing of a good man. All the good men are gone. All the good men ain't married. They meet some of you women. And they meet the wrong woman. And sometimes that turns them around. I'm speaking this word to you. I ain't trying to get in touch with my female self. I ain't trying to find on my softer side. I talk like a man. I talk like a man. I walk like a man. I sound like I got the voice of many waters. I'm not talking to you in no soprano. I'm not going to come into you in no alto. I'm speaking this word to you. I'm telling you that it's time for our men. We got to go higher. It's time for our men to take back our street. It's time for our men to keep some of these kids and bring them all the way back. Yeah, brother, you messed up. You had to rap. She fell for your rap. You messed up. But it's time to make it right. It's time to get it right. You can still change. I'm telling you that they rather, they raised us like we were bucks, like we were studs. Everybody want to be the player, player from the Himalayas. But I learned a lesson. If you can love one woman more than you can love your wife, I'm telling you that there's a blessing of a good man. God's about to prosper. God's about to lift us. If you believe that there's a blessing of a good man, our churches don't need to be full of women only. Jones Jr. Senior said that our church was in danger of becoming a women's auxiliary. Men want to be talked to like men. Men want to be referenced like men. I'm tired of the soft stuff. I'm a real man. I, you can throw me on the streets. I'll call you them and I can make it. You can bring me back to the Lord God and I can make it. Take me to Glenfield. Because I'm a real man. That's a blessing of a good man. Well, I'll tell you a good man. Sees a child is not here. Going wrong. And we snatch that child up. A good man tries to make stuff.
officer stop is right at his house. A good man cuts the grass next door. If the house is abandoned, a good man keeps pushing Jesus. A good man don't try to be deep. A good man just does the work. I'm telling you that there's a blessing of a good man. We need some good men. Our life will change because of some good men. Our city will change because of a good man. Our homes will change because of a good man. 